Awesome. So uh, I'm going to start by telling you guys about a problem I've had a few times this year. So um, three times this year, when I've gone and upgraded pieces of my infrastructure, it's broken me completely. And every single time, I haven't discovered it until a couple days later. When you know I'm in a time crunch and I need things to work, and then I discover they don't, and you've got to roll back, and it's late enough that it's hard. Um, so how did I break? So uh, Prometheus did it twice. It's actually the one that motivated this talk. And uh, a week after I submitted this, I upgraded Kubernetes and Vault broke. Um, why did these break? These broke because there's a lot of different moving parts. There's lots of different pieces of configuration. These are complex systems, and they don't have my configuration to test with. So they can't really guarantee everything's going to work. And I need a low effort way to have a stable environment, and I really don't want to be running software that's two years out of date. So I got to be updating regularly. Uh, how did I detect these issues? Well, every single one of these issues was detected because something else I had in place already broke. So, um, you know, I had other applications that were using Prometheus for the monitoring. At some point, I look at a chart, realize the chart's not working in Grafana. Um, similarly, when, uh, when Kubernetes broke, uh, I had certain applications that were using uh, Vault Secrets, and they just wouldn't start. Um, so, what I realized was issue one. Many of my applications are using Canary deployments. They're querying Prometheus for, with health checks while they deploy. And hey, number two, if I redeploy an application, it's going to restart the pods. So if I redeploy my applications, I would have detected the issues in all three of these situations. Um, this got me thinking about a way that at a prior SaaS company, we handled a complex systems testing challenge. Um, we didn't have enough unit test coverage. It was a very complex system, and every customer looked different. So how did we test? We set up an infrastructure to automatically run every customer's configuration through test validation as part of our release process. So before we shipped, we validated every customer. Hey, I've, I've got all my applications. I'm choosing one to upgrade Prometheus. I'm choosing one to upgrade Kubernetes. I can do the same thing. I can think of my applications as test cases for the infrastructure that is supporting them. So, you know, I didn't really have time to build a bunch of tests. I didn't want to manage anything extra, so you know, I didn't want to set up an extra staging environment. But you know, for my purpose, I could also handle schedule downtime. So you know, I started going, how do I use my existing monitoring? How do I use my existing deployment pipelines for apps in order to make sure that everything else works? Um, so in order to do things in place and, and, and kind of deal with this, I decided to try leveraging advanced deployment strategies. Um, so in case anyone's not aware, uh, Canary deployment is a process where you stand up a new version of code alongside the old version and then slowly send new traffic to the new version. In between every increase in traffic, you run some automated validations. You know, maybe you're querying Prometheus, maybe you're running a webhook, et cetera, just to make sure everything's still healthy. Once everything seems healthy, then you uh, you know, increase it to the next level, and finally, when everything's at 100% to the new version, you shut down the old one. Um, another advanced deployment strategy that I considered using is uh, blue-green deployments. It's fairly similar, only instead of incrementally increasing traffic, you kind of move it all over in bulk, um, but you validate service health both before and after you move traffic. So similar concepts, and uh, I actually landed on, for this use case, doing a bit of a hybrid. Um, so I was originally going to use a canary strategy. I started setting that up, and I went, you know, for my use case, I don't actually care about like limiting traffic. Didn't care about limiting blast radius. I just cared about running those automated tests in place when I'm upgrading it. And you know, blue green does that well, but you're testing before you route traffic. You're testing after. I just wanted to test once. So uh, what I did is kind of a little bit of a hybrid. I still did it using a canary strategy and a CD tool. I basically just spun up the new version, sent all the traffic to it, and then ran all my automated validation. Um, didn't write any new automation. I, uh, so all of this was done by basically just adding like one new deployment pipeline in a off-the-shelf deployment pipeline tool. Um, so the strategy I wound up using was basically deploy 100% of traffic, run, uh, run my uh, existing Prometheus monitoring through Prometheus, make sure every uh, query is giving me back a value. Make sure that value seems reasonable. Yes. 
Um, as, as I said, did not care about blast radius. If you care about blast radius, do 0%, then 100%. I'm impatient. Um, we then, the, the, the other thing I wanted to do, though, is I was ta talking about how my apps are, are uh, test cases and how, like Vault breaking, I only noticed because my pods wouldn't start. So in order to catch that class of issue, I then went and, cool, we validated Prometheus. We validated my queries are happy. Now let's go validate all of the applications that use Prometheus in their deployment pipeline still validate. So I have a bunch of other apps that are doing canary and blue-green strategies. Do those still work? Uh, if they do, then I can probably safely upgrade Prometheus. If they don't, well, I've got a problem. I need to go investigate that. And I can roll back and take a look. Um, so when using other applications as a test case, how did I do this? So I started by updating Prometheus. I then queried the existing Prometheus monitoring, which was you know, making sure that everything I knew should work was working. And then I simply uh, triggered uh, C CI CD pipelines. I basically just told every other app, go redeploy yourself. They redeployed themselves. They ran whatever their logic was. You know, Many of them are automated analysis against Prometheus, which is, again, validating the health of Prometheus. If those apps failed, they were automatically rolling back. So when they roll back their app, I roll back my Prometheus upgrade. Suddenly I know what app breaks. I can go and take a look. And once I've upgraded, I know all my apps can deploy. Uh, having done this, what's my experience? Um, so, you know, I, I talked earlier about how Prometheus broke me. So every time Prometheus broke me, it was causing one of my existing known queries to fail. So the first one was a Helm chart change that caused it to no longer ingest my annotations. Hey, I have queries analyzing annotations. They all broke. Uh, the other one was a out-of-the-box Prometheus metric that was renamed. Um, now, when I upgrade, I can easily see which metric broke. I can click in. I can get the Prometheus query. I can go run that against Prometheus. And then I can decide, OK, Cool, I know it's breaking. Let's roll back. Let's go read the Prometheus release notes. Hopefully they told me what to do about it. Then I can fix it and then finally upgrade. Um, so I want to do this to more of my infra. I've, so far, I've only done Prometheus and open cost. Um, but I believe it can help me with more. And there's a couple benefits that I got that I wasn't expecting when I started. So one of them is now I can easily see when I'm deploying what broke. Before it was, you know, all a bunch of, of shell scripts, and uh, you know, now I know exactly which system broke. I also was using a declarative de deployment tool, so when I'm provisioning a new cluster, I run the exact same logic. Um, but you know, Vault I want to run. It's broke before. Before I upgrade it next, I need to flip it over to, the, to this. Um, console is used by my Vault installation. Uh, I also run Spinnaker. Um, so when when Vault broke me, the thing that actually detected it was the next time I updated Spinnaker um, because I was using Vault Secrets in my Spinnaker pipelines. Um, so in order to you know, detect Vault, I need to also apply Spinnaker to this. Um, some of my apps that are using Canary are using Linkerd as a service mesh. Um, so you know, if I'm using those in order to route traffic during deployment, again, I can validate that those Linkerd, uh, the Linkerd infrastructure is working properly through the same means. Um, so how do we validate these different use cases? Um, so, you know, these are kind of different use cases for different things, all of which m simply running my app's pipelines and redeploying will test. So, um, you know, redeploying Spinnaker gets Vault and Console. Um, Spinnaker, an open policy agent, I use in my to deploy the apps that I deploy with Spinnaker. So, you know, if I redeploy those apps, I've just validated the health of both of those systems. Uh, Linkerd I mentioned, uh, Jenkins, so my integration tests are in GitHub Actions, some are in Jenkins. How do I validate Jenkins? Well, I run all, I redeploy the apps that use Jenkins, revalidate their integration test work. And for Kubernetes, uh, so I use EKS. Um, I don't know if you guys have ever tried to roll back an EKS cluster, but the last two times I did that, it, uh, it made me hate my life. So my current intention for Kubernetes upgrades is it's a declarative deployment tool. Rather than doing it as upgrade testing, I'll stand up a new cluster, run the exact same logic on the new cluster, and then if it passes, I know I'm good to upgrade. 
Um, so that is uh, the story of how I have started using Canary deployments with Prometheus. Um, any questions? Um, so I have, yes. So on, in the case of Prometheus, uh, it uses, um, it's got multiple different ways to deploy. And I've, you, I've done two different versions of it this way. Um, so my main Prometheus uh, implementation is using the Prometheus operator and is using stateful sets. And one of the things which made me flip to uh, sending 100% of traffic is uh, the Prometheus operator doesn't like having two copies of itself running in parallel. <laughs> Um, but um, it Prometheus upgrades and downgrades on that stateful set cleanly. So basically spin up the new, the new stateful set on the new version, run all, that, all of that validation, then you can roll back. Um, the other one that I, I did do successfully is um, if you're not using Prometheus operator, um, you can mount a uh, read-write many volume for your uh, Prometheus instance for storing state, and that also works. Any other questions? It depends on your applications and your risk profile. So um, in my career, I have seen a few different types of applications. So um, at, a, at a prior company that shall remain nameless, we had a product that took, you know, depending on the company, you know, ran, ran per tenant architecture, took four to like 48 hours to start. Redeploying something like that as part of this would be a really bad idea. Um, most of the applications I have today are microservices based and, you know, take 10 to 20 seconds to start and it's a relatively low risk thing. I would definitely be mindful of what applications you choose this approach on. If you have something that is going to take, you know, hours to start, it's probably not, redeploying it is probably not your best bet. Um, at that point, I would recommend doing something like maybe kill one pod, make sure that one pod start restarts. But, you know, in general, I also think that uh, having applications that are fast to start and that we can redeploy safely should be a goal for everyone. Um, I very much recognize not every, not every app is there. Um, so I have, but most of my data migrations have been fairly simple and I haven't done them in my deployment strategy. I've done them in my app and basically had it like check a current database schema version, make sure that you maintain schema compatibility for a while. Um, I have a customer, so Armor, Armory makes deployment software. Um, I've got a couple customers who do that and um, a lot of them who do it outside of the app have you know, a script that basically you can say, hey, migrate to this database version um, or roll back to this database version. Um, and uh, using this for stateful applications in that way, I do have people who do that general approach with Canary and basically on rollback, you call it with the old version and before deploying immediately before you deploy, you call it with the new version. Um, so I do think there's ways to, to, to do these strategies with stateful, but you need to be very careful and um, not all stateful applications like having multiple copies of the application against the same stateful store, um, but even things like MySQL do have ways to do that. Any other questions? Cool, well that was all I had.